Since the beginning of time, the Middle East has been a land of intrigue. Of heroic warriors, bitter rivalries, alliances that shift with the desert sands, a land where friends can become foes in the blink of an eye. And during two plus decades of war, American soldiers have given us new stories from this faraway land. Stories of selfless service and personal sacrifice. Stories of heroic action in the face of unsustainable odds. Keeping the faith and accomplishing the mission, even when those we were there to help turned their backs. Where the safest place in town can become a death trap. On 20 January 2007, a small group of U.S. Army military police and parachute field artillery personnel learned this bitter lesson when Iraqi insurgents, with support from the Iranian Guard, attacked the provincial police headquarters in Karbala. Helped by the local Iraqi police, these soldiers had been assigned to train and support. In less than an hour of bitter fighting in tightly confined spaces, three U.S. soldiers were wounded one was killed on site. Four others captured and executed outside of town. But that's not the end of the story. Months later, an after-action investigation not only confirmed the Iraqi betrayal, but pointed to betrayal on the American side as well. Now, for the first time, these surviving soldiers tell their stories, put their feelings on the table, and ask the questions that have yet to be fully answered. I thought we were doing good with the Iraqi police down there as far as helping them out and, you know, trying to better their, their police station and whatnot. We were there to, to train them and uh, be with them and, and uh, teach them how to be law enforcement officers and make their country better. It just came to one day where just they disappeared and we were getting attacked. And just left us there, you know, to fend for ourselves. The attack was, it was awful. I mean, it was like a horror movie. Uh, I relive it every day. It's chaos. And once everything kind of settled down, we ended up finding out five of our guys were gone. Um, later, later on, it came out to be that they were actually kidnapped and taken out there and found dead. That's the hardest thing to ever to ever look at is, you know, somebody wearing, you know, that you've trained with and you you talk to every day and then all of a sudden, that's the hardest thing I ever looked at, somebody in our uniform laying there. It's terrible. I see Sergeant Taylor and I just remember the time that we were getting attacked and he ran to me to tell me. I guess he felt he was going to be gone. I relive it every day. Uh, I mean, there'll always be something that triggers when you think about it, always. I wish it'd go away, but I mean, it's who I am now. I know the Iraqis betrayed us. I mean, we were there and they disappeared and they hid and didn't start coming out until it was all over with because they were talking on cell phones and they knew when it was clear. Uh, as far as the other, I don't, I don't have any answers to that because I don't know. I've not been told anything and uh, the, the, the story never was explained to me. It just died like it didn't happen. I serve my country and I love my country and I do believe that myself and the rest of my brothers and sisters who are out there deserve an answer as to what happened that day. Who exactly betrayed us? To what end? for what greater good. And even as they bear the physical scars of battle and the emotional scars of betrayal, these young men and women still love their country and take pride in their service. Could you, if you were so brutally sold out? <laughs>